think it's a good moment um, in the industry at the moment to reflect on that. We've got games like Halo 3 just out, we've got Bioshock out, we've got Mass Effect coming out soon where a lot of the buzz and interest in the games is about story. So, for example, Halo 3 critiqued a little bit in some reviews for, for the sense that the story was a little bit tacked on. Mm -hmm. Bioshock, an argument that this is a really immersive story experience. So I'm just wondering if you could explore a little bit and discuss what your views are on what makes for a good relationship between story, storytelling, narrative, and that gameplay experience of playing the game. Well, you are right, John. I think that the entire industry is sort of hitting critical mass, and not that anyone really is creating solutions, but realizing that story and gameplay has to be thought about together and seriously. In my opinion, when you build a story world, that story world is going to suggest a certain type of gameplay. And likewise, that gameplay will suggest certain kinds of story events that occur. So even before you start building your game and building your missions and anyone's developing or programming anything, you almost need a philosophy of what, it, what is the philosophy of story and gameplay integration, which may sound rather profound, but it really means you think about the world you're going to have people play in. And what's going to be exciting and relevant? For example, if I say the world of 24 to you, you know exactly what kind of action is going to take place. You know what's at stake. You know the kinds of things that are going to occur. Lots of codes and bombs and so forth. If I mention the world of, a world of aliens to you, uh, a certain different kind of action starts taking place. Things get bumped up a little bit militarily. There's more sort of narrow tunnels go through. And there's more spooky moments more things that actually scare you. So you start building up that story world. It's going to suggest gameplay. And they really need to, I think, at this point in time, be built together. Now, unlike, say, a film screenplay or a TV screenplay or novels, which I do a lot of, you start with the story idea and you let it grow. But even with a novel, there comes a point where you're writing a chapter and you could go off in eight or nine or ten different directions. So in a way, you're focusing on what you think is that most exciting moment. Likewise with a game, mission to mission, it should be going to the next sort of moment that is absolutely key and vital to the story. So th thinking that through a little bit further, what would be a good example that you can think of in the games industry at the moment or a game that does this well? Well, I mean, talking about games that I haven't worked on, which I can talk about a little bit, but being a game writer and writer of various other things, I actually have very little time to play other games, but certainly Bioshock certainly set the bar very high. I believe the early Halo was excellent for the way it used story. I think there are games in the pipeline that are doing this too, like you mentioned Mass Effect. Uh, in terms of games I've worked on recently, which are the ones obviously I know intimately, um, Pirates of the Caribbean was obviously based on the film at World's End, and yet had encompass all three movies and tell its own story. The great thing about that is the executive producer and the producer on the project allow this bubble of time to build what is going to be the world of pirates, what is really the world of pirates about, and if we're going to deal with all these elements, what's the story that's going to be tying all these things together and doing something new, and then what kind of gameplay does it suggest? Uh, and I think, you know, that the game Rage I'm working on for the Doom 3 people, Id, um, that was a case where we built the Bible, the world, the story world, before we started really going into any of the events that are going to occur. And even now we're building those events. So the world's a very futuristic world. It's also a world I can't talk too much about. But it's, it's doing it the right way in the sense you build up that world and then look and see what kind of gameplay does it suggest. And also how does the gameplay mechanics they have, what kind of world does it suggest? If you, if you have mechanics, something new, new technology, where it has tremendous physics or the, the driving is remarkable, or the way you navigate through space or flying, then you, then you it trig opens up the door to start thinking about story worlds that could somehow embrace that. So it's definitely a back and forth iterative process and it's one that needs to occur with brainstorming, walks in the rainforest, anywhere you want to go to get different ideas to feed into that before people start building stuff. Cool. In terms of the game, games industry itself and the development process mm -hmm. and how that that creative process of developing the story, integrating the story with, with the gameplay and the game design, level design, mm -hmm. etc. Do you think the games industry is doing that better now or learning how to do that? Or? They're definitely, well, you know, you say they, it's like in your picture, like it's a monolithic yeah. block, the games industry, uh, where actually it's, you know, a dozen big com companies and maybe 20 smaller ones 
and there's 30, 50, 60 developers around the world. And every project I do, unfortunately I might say, it seems like it's a brand new process. That said, from when I started making games years ago, let's say, uh, there's a heightened awareness that the story is important. Not that narrative is going to, has to be linear or has to drive the gameplay. It's just that the way the next generation machines look, the graphics, the new engines are being developed, it has to be treated as a very serious thing. And uh, whether it's a story on a very light basis, it has to be integrated into it. So yes, generally I'm finding changes. Do I find a lot of people create that bubble of time to sort of play with those ideas, to really use whiteboards? Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. And I think often it can show in the project. But if there's one suggestion I'd make to the industry in general, is, is make that time. Do the retreat, go for a week in the mountains, and come back and have, and sort of have in paper form, the world and the story and the gameplay you want to have.